Hey guys, how are you? So will chat GPT kill algorithm writers in the programming world? Short answer is, yeah, I think so. Don't get me wrong, I'm not one of these chat GPT AI doom and gloomers. I don't think that these technologies will have, uh, will replace software developers for a long time coming in general, but it will shift what it is we do as software developers. But this is nothing new. I've seen over the years, and I've been writing code since 94 commercially, that yes, as new technologies come out into the world, the game changes a little bit. And next thing you know, what we used to do back in 1996, we don't do in 2000. What we used to do in 2000, we don't do in 2010, and so on. So chat, GPT, and other AI assistive tools will help a lot in certain areas. So for example, I played around with it for a couple hours, and yes, you can use it to get answers to code questions, to have it optimize code, write out boilerplate code. Now, if you are a noob, unexperienced in the real worlds of the coding world, yes, that could seem pretty scary to you, right? Oh my God, oh my God, it's writing all this code. Ah. These people who are in fear of this eh, are people who probably don't write much commercial code, if any. So why do I say that chat GPT and other AI-based tools will replace algorithm writers? I believe so, because when you're writing an algorithm, it's a very finite piece of code. And so you can point an AI at it and have it rewrite it, rewrite it, optimize, optimize. Now, how good a job they will do, I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, is to write a little chunk of fine, a little chunk of algorithm code, if you will, um, is a lot easier, like infinitely easier than putting together a system. As ChatGPT says itself, it, it knows because it goes around and uh, it extracts information from the interwebs. When you're building actual apps, there's a lot more to it than just writing the code, it's figuring out what languages to use based on the needs of the job. Now, how you figure out what languages to use is it's just not a technical issue. There's more to it than just the technical. You have to consider the business considerations. You got to look at the infrastructure that a company already has in the business. You have to think about two, three years down the line, what might be best given the expectations of the business, so on and so forth. These are things that AI will not be able to address probably for a long, long time. And that's just the scratching of the surface, right? In fact, as I've said in many other videos, when you're writing a code, it's almost, it's almost the end of the process, really. There's a lot of high level thinking that have to be put into any commercial project that you're working on. So for that reason alone, I wouldn't be too concerned about AI in terms of development, it will speed up the process, it will eliminate the need to write a bunch of boilerplate code, but of course, that's why people had libraries and frameworks, right? You can just go boop and drop things into place. Trust me, don't look for code to write, don't be fearful when technologies, whether it be chat, GPT, or some other AI, or just a really good framework, don't be concerned that they take away that code from having to be written. That is not something to be concerned about. As I say, don't look for code to write. Trust me, there'll be plenty for you to consider. So to conclude, yes, I think algorithm writing will become less and less important. Not that it's actually very important these days, by the way. One of the lunacies in, modern, uh, in the modern market of software development is companies that are hiring web app developers, mobile app developers, and they're testing them, testing them with algorithm skills. Some companies do that. I don't know what the percentage is, but silly enough, a lot of companies do, and I know why they do it. You just have to understand basic psychology. What they would do is they look, oh look, Google's testing for algorithms, Facebook's testing for algorithms, I guess we should test for algorithm, algorithms. Now, the reason a Google and a Facebook would test for algorithms is because they're running code many a times for very large systems where highly optimized execution is very important. When you have a search engine, it's very important. When you're dealing with billions of users, it's very important. But for most apps, that kind of stuff never comes into play. In my career, which started when I started writing commercial code in 94, 
in my career, having written many, many apps, it may have come once or twice where I've had to bust my head over an algorithm. Most of the time, optimization, especially with most apps that you're developing, web apps, mobile, it comes to database access. You know, most of the optimization is there. A lot of it is just user usability, user uh, access, if you will. So I wouldn't, I'm not too concerned about algorithms. They shouldn't be testing for algorithms unless you're working on a game engine. Maybe you're building a search engine or something to that effect, having to deal with massive amounts of data where highly optimized code that way would come into, come into play. It's one of these silly things in the software world. Anyway, that all said, you look at AI and how it operates, the first thing we'll be able to tackle is those little chunks of finite code, algorithms. But being able to put together a system where you have dis disparate pieces working together, APIs and libraries and deciding on server options and deployment options, blah, 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 blah. AI is not a threat to that. Let me tell you, before AI gets that uh, replaced, it's going to replace just about every other job in the world. So uh, you have plenty of warning before that happens. I hope that helps. Hey, my name is Steph. Some people call me Uncle Steph. I invite you to join my Coder's Career Path newsletter. Uh, thousands and thousands of people already subscribed. I don't send out too many newsletters, but I send out interesting ones when I do. And uh, it's just a, a way for me to keep in touch with you. In each and every newsletter, you have an unsubscribe link. And so if you don't want to be receiving any newsletters, you just unsubscribe. And I prefer that you do, because the less people on my list, the cheaper it is for me to run my list. So unsubscribe if you want to. But it's probably worth keeping on board because I release some interesting content in there. I'll be releasing some uh, content that will only be available to newsletter people and people in my mentoring program. So yeah, link below. Check out the newsletter. Uh, it's worthwhile. Also, I have a Discord server. If you're a Discord type of person, check it out below. We have over 3,000 people on the Discord server, uh, from total beginners to advanced people, and they're all pretty polite. You're not going to get any RTFM attacks if you have any questions, and a good place to meet other people, collab on things, work on different projects. Pretty cool Discord server. Again, so there you go. Check out my Discord server. Check out my Coder's Career Path newsletter. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.